we are in back to school mode. So my house is <laughs> a little questionable, but okay, I'll show you the side. This is the questionable side. Yeah, I'm sad. Um, but I've got a lot to do. I need to, well, I've got a turkey in the crock pot that I'm gonna put in, making spinach muffins, some cherry muffins my daughter wanted me to make. She wants to make cookies for a friend. Gonna put some pizza dough in the bread maker. Wanna cut some carrots, wanna make some such sausage muffins for my breakfast and French toast sticks. I don't know that I'll get all of this done today, but we're gonna do as much as we can because school starts soon. My husband goes back to school from his summer break to, or goes back to work from his summer break starting tomorrow because he works out of school and we've got a lot to do. Last Thanksgiving, I got this nine and a half pound-ish turkey from Ibotta for free. And I am finally gonna cook it in a crock pot somehow. I have no idea what I'm doing. But we are going to start with the spinach muffins that my kids love. So we're gonna start off with the flour and a little bit of baking powder and some baking soda and some salt. And then just stir it up really good. Then set that aside and mix together the eggs and sugar. Once that's nice and foamy, you'll add the oil and then the Greek yogurt. I don't have any lemon zest, but I am gonna use lemon extract instead, and that will still give it a good solid flavor. And of course, the vanilla to make it extra tasty. And a couple cups of packed spinach. It really makes such a bright, pretty green color. I think it's kind of cool. I forgot to eat lunch. I got some salami and a cheese stick. <laughs> Yum. I never really liked salami growing up, but I like it now. Just roll it up with some cheese, and that is a tasty little morsel. Mmm. Love it. All right, muffins are cooled down. We're gonna bag them up and put them in the freezer. And you know, maybe it's just me, but because I said the phrase, bag them up, now I've got no diggity stick in my head. And I thought, maybe I could get that background music on here. And then I thought, yeah, it's not the most appropriate song. But, you know, you're welcome as well. Because who doesn't love that song? I'm a mom, but I'm still cool. No doubt. These are so good. We're going to make some French toast sticks from this giant loaf of bread I got. Look how huge these slices are. These are like an inch and a half thick. They're amazing. So I'm very excited for this. I'm going to start off slicing up the pieces of bread, but oh, this is challenging for me. <laughs> Maybe we should try doing one slice at a time, but this is still struggly. That was a huge fail. So I got the awesome pizza slicer and let's see. Mm, get it even. Okay. Oh, oh yes, this is better. This is good. Okay, this is the entire loaf sliced up to get ready to make French toast sticks. 
We have seven eggs and a cup of milk. And so with the vanilla, we let that speak to us because we like it the vanilla. So do what you want. A teaspoon of cinnamon, make it nice and flavory. And then we're gonna also add in about two tablespoons of sugar. And three tablespoons of melted butter. Get it out. So you've got that nice and whisked up, you are going to start getting your pieces. You're gonna dunk them, let them drip a little bit, drain off some of that eggy stuff, and then you're gonna lay them on your pan. They can be pretty close together, so you can fit quite a bit on this pan. And into the oven at 350 degrees. These cook for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how crispy you want them. So about halfway through, take them out and flip them. So that way both sides can get crispy. I think the sugar coating or the sugar that we put into the mix helps the outer coating to get a little crispier. So don't forget to flip them so you can get them nice and perfect. These French toast sticks smell so dang good. Um, do you remember when Fear Factor was a thing and popular and Joe Rogan would always be like, I wish you guys had smell-o-vision because this stuff is nasty. Well, I wish you had smell-o-vision because the stuff smells good. Oh man, I love the smell of French toast. I think it's the vanilla and the cinnamon. No, I wish it was fall. Oh, it smells so good. These French toast sticks are going to come in my very small freezer, very packed freezer and flash freezer. And I'll take them out and put them in a bag. These are done and ready to be stored in the fridge for easy breakfasts or lunches for my kids. Also, you guys, I really don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm sure I'm not, but we're hoping it turns out okay just the same. I thought this was a boneless, skinless turkey breast, and I was very surprised when I opened it up and saw the bones and skin. I hate meat. It's so gross. <laughs> it's tasty sometimes, but I don't like eating a lot of it. But, you know, do what you gotta do. I know it's good for me. I would just rather not be the one to touch it. Okay, the French toast is finishing up. My house smells really good right now. Next, I'm going to put the pizza dough in the bread machine to go in dough cycle. And then when it's done, I'll put it in the freezer to pull out of the freezer on Friday morning because we do pizza nights on Friday nights. And so it's a lot easier if the pizza dough's already made, especially because my husband's not home for the summer anymore because he goes back to work on Monday. And so if I forget it, he can't make it. And then we're SOL on pizza. So I'm going to get the bread machine out, mix up some pizza dough and have it ready to go in the freezer for us. First things first, check to make sure this little guy is actually in there because then more than one occasion, I had forgotten to check that it was there and it was not for some unholy reason and then my bread never mixed so make sure this guy's in there the counter is getting a little bit cramped <laughs> add some cornmeal to the water some oil and they're good and a little bit of sugar and some honey which is just hard to get out sometimes I'm lazy. I usually just do that when I need half. <laughs> Not super precise. I need about three and a half cups of flour for this pizza dough. It makes two pizza doughs. So I have my flour in this giant bucket that I keep in my pantry. And I know this is not how you're supposed to measure flour, but it is what I do. So I'm sorry if this offends you, but this is just easier for me. I hate making a lot of dirty dishes. Okay, normally we do onion powder and garlic powder, 
but I'm out of garlic powder. So I'm gonna put in some onion powder and also add in about a teaspoon worth of Italian seasoning. But I'm feeling wild today and not measuring this stuff. I don't care if I have more, it tastes good. I don't know if that's enough. Looks good to me. I do measure my yeast. I'm not totally crazy. Okay, that's everything. So we are going to pop it in the bread machine. Pop and lock it. Like I said, I'm so cool. Plug it in and put it at a seven for the dough and start. All right, my five-year-old just came inside screaming because the neighbor kid won't let her have a turn on a skateboard. Her shrieking woke up the baby. I can hear him on the monitor. So I just got, I have the turkey, the French toast, the spinach muffins, and the bread machine going now. So if I don't get back to my prep work tonight, that's pretty good. We'll see what happens if I can get some more done. The dough is done, so I am gonna pull this out and put it in a bowl to rise for about 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna separate it and put it into bags. The dough looks so good after it's risen. I love it. Well, I am very much struggling to get this in here one-handed while holding a camera in the other hand, but I'm gonna tie up these bread bags and pop them in the freezer so that on Friday morning, I can pull them out to thaw all day for pizza that night. The turkey has been cooking for about nine hours, maybe a little longer, and the thermometer says it's done. So I need to peel the skin off and debone this sucker. That's gross. This is a huge bowl. This thing gave us so much turkey to eat. Okay, I did not get to finish any more of my prepping for the week after my daughter woke up the baby. So. We are now a few days later. I am a full-time working mom. Uh, my husband also works. And so during the days, we're not really here, except I get to work from home a couple days a week. So I am here. My lunch break started 20 minutes ago. And I am going to chop up a few veggies, make myself some lunch, and continue to meal prep with the time that I have available to me. Some of the things I wanted to accomplish today that were still on my list from the other day is cherry muffins, cutting carrots, and the sausage muffins. I've also since added making pumpkin zucchini muffins and zucchini bread because I end up getting some zucchini that I would like to use up before it goes bad. Um, I don't know that I'll get all this done today. I probably won't, but I think I could at least get the carrots done, the sausage muffins, and the cherry muffins. I also wanted to add making another uh, batch of pizza dough so that I'm like a week ahead on the pizza dough. So that's my goal. We'll see what I can do. And again, I need to make lunch because I'm starving. Do y'all have an air fryer? I'm like not super impressed with the air fryer. It's okay. It's nice for like freezer type things like this. And I made drumsticks in them and they were fine. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I have a hard time justifying a whole huge, huge appliance just for reheating frozen food. I will say though, that when it reheats frozen food, it's awesome. Like uh, chicken nuggets and fish sticks are the bomb in this thing, but I'm still not totally sold on it. I don't know. Maybe I just need a smaller one that's not such a beast. It's enormous. Write below and tell me if you like the air fryer or if there's something I should be cooking in it to make me a diehard air fryer lover. But have you tried these? These are from Costco. I love these. These are so good. They have veggie burger ones that are also very good, but Costco hasn't had them in forever. They also have chicken patties, which I think are disgusting. They are, it's the texture, they're just, it looks like a gray sponge. My husband loves it. He thinks they're great, chopped up and put in salads. I just, I couldn't deal with it, it made me sick. Um, that may be because of my like post COVID issues that I just have a hard time with meat in general, but ooh, those are nasty. These, however, are amazing. So I highly recommend them. And they're very good in the air fryer. Also fun fact, this thing has set off our smoke alarm more than once. So now I always make sure the window's open <laughs> because 
our smoke detector is so freaking loud and it was terrifying and my kids are freaking out. So if you're like us in a small confined place, keep your window open. While my lunch is cooking, we're gonna chop up some carrots. My kids do not, okay, my, my younger daughter loves to eat just a whole carrot like this. My older daughter does not. They also don't really like baby carrots. Um, I think they're too thick for them. So I will peel these, slice them into like, um, what's the word? Okay, I had to pause so I could think of the word, but matchstick. So we kind of chop these up into match matchstick slices and my kids will devour them that way. So this takes me a while. But we'll see if I can do it fast today. Okay, this knife is amazing. This is a cheese knife. It is a Cutco cheese knife, and it cuts through the hardest things. I sometimes have like a weird thing with my wrists. I don't know if it's like a tendonitis thing or what, but. This knife cuts through things so easily. Like I have a hard time cutting sweet potatoes with just a regular knife. And look how easy, this just glides through. And I'm sure there's other brands besides Cutco, but this is one that was given to me by my mother-in-law and it's amazing. And I think Cutco comes with like a lifetime warranty. So you can get your blade sharpened when you need to. So I'm a fan of this one. I've had it for a few years now. And because I'm positive, you are dying to know, for my veggie burger thing, black bean burger, I get a tortilla, put on this love of my life dressing, this cottage cilantro. You get it in the refrigerated section, buy all the fruits and veggies, at least that's where it is when any store I go to. And then I'm gonna get the black bean burger, kind of chop it up into sticks and make this thing a big old taco. This sucker is a little impossible to eat, but worth it. And I just need to hurry and finish peeling and chopping up all of these carrot match sticks. Okay, well, that's it. That's about two pounds of carrots right there, all chopped and ready to go for the rest of the week and into next week because we're probably not gonna eat this all um, before the end of the week. So I might even get some more carrots this weekend when I go grocery shopping, but this is good for now. Slight change of plans. I do not have time to actually make the muffins that I was planning on making because I've got to chop up fruit and stuff for him and I just don't have time for that. I do, however, have these. I bought these protein instant oatmeals on a discount from Smith's. Um, they weren't good. They were not like Kodiak Cakes oatmeal, which is the bomb protein oatmeal. Um, these, I really don't like instant oatmeal in general, so it was kind of a risk for me to try. It's just a texture thing, I've always hated it. Um, so my husband doesn't want this either. And so I decided I would look for a way to use them up and I found instant oatmeal muffins. I've never heard of these. So hopefully these will become instant oatmeal protein muffins and that they will taste good because the flavor wasn't bad, it was, it was the texture. So we'll make these up really quick. Shouldn't take very long. And then we will be done for this next, at least the next several days. So at least for this video, we will be done prepping for school. All right, we are starting off with the flour. So it said one and three fourths a cup of flour. And I am lazy and don't like getting as much dish as dirty as I can. So that's about three fourths a cup of flour. Go me. And a third of a cup of flour. Not flour, this is sugar. A third of a cup of sugar, guys. Two teaspoons baking powder, and then about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to add two packs of the protein oatmeal, oh, very carefully, don't drop it, and stir it all up. Probably should use a whisk, but I likely won't. Gotta do the well thing for the wet ingredients. 
Okay, we've got our egg. Let's see if we can do this without cracking it in. Cracking the shell in. Man, I'm good. I didn't beat it ahead of time, so I'm just gonna do that right in here. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit with that. Another thing, I never have problems doing this way instead of how they say. And some oil, fourth of a cup. And a cup of milk. And you can't forget the vanilla. That's probably good. Oh yeah, that's a great amount. We are gonna stir this real good. Not too good. Okay, this recipe calls for making a strudel to put on top of it, which would be delicious, but I'm wanting these for like protein. So I will cut out the excess sugar and I think they'll still be delicious. And these silicone wrappers have come in extra handy. And those are my neighbor kids screaming. Okay, these are going in the oven for about 16 minutes. Okay. Those are in the oven, cook for about 15, 16 minutes. I've got a meeting to get to. I cannot abuse my work from home time. So I will be done for today with my prepping for the week. I only got to do the two things, um, but you know, it helps every little bit, especially when you're a working parent, just do the best we can with the time that we have. We can't do everything, but we can do some. And every little bit helps, especially when you have a busy family and busy life and you just, you do what you can. These oatmeal muffins are done and they smell pretty good. Um, they just got like a hint of a maple brown sugary smell. So I'm gonna let these cool down and then I'm gonna try one because they look good. Okay, I cracked into these um, after my work meeting just to give them a try and they're not bad. Texture's a little interesting, um, a little, I wanna say gummy. Gummy's not right, the right word. Chewy, a little denser chewy than a normal muffin would be. I don't know if that's the oatmeal or if I overmixed it, which is, likely um but the flavor's not bad it's good i think this will be a good way to use up the rest of those oatmeal packets that i have where the texture of the cooked oatmeal tasted gross to me but the flavor was good so nice way to save my money not waste it thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe i'd love to have you continue to follow along as i share more of our frugal life thanks